Alrighty, so let's actually get to what Meghan Markle and uh, and Prince Harry actually said. Because, I mean, what difficult lives they lead. It is, it is one of the saddest stories I've ever heard. I mean, a prince, grew up a prince, was shielded from his own idiocy for literally years. Remember, Prince Harry was a guy who just, back in 2005, dressed up in like a full-on Nazi uniform at a Halloween party. Right? So like Ralph Northam, which just poof, never happened, right? <laughs> it's pretty incredible how um how that guy, is now Captain Woke. So that's exciting stuff. Repentance is possible, people. All you have to do is take your entire family and just toss them under the bus. And meanwhile, Megan, what a victim. What a, I mean, what a difficult life she has led. I, I can't speak enough about what a heroine she is. I mean, just the, the amount of heroism that she displayed by going on Oprah and ripping on her in-law's family for for fame and fortune. I, I mean, truly incredible stuff. She is, she, what a, it's tough. It's tough. I mean, so many tough things have happened to Meghan Markle. Like one time Kate Middleton taught her to curtsy. Or Prince Harry, taught, Prince Harry taught her to curtsy right before she met the queen. You know, it's just because she was an ignorant American, you see. And then she was ushered into the halls. Back. But then she, she saw the flaws in the royal family in a way no one else could because she'd experienced American style racism. So she was shocked to see it in the halls of royalty. That's it. By the way, Netflix movie coming out in a year. Watch. Starring them, bro. Probably. Right, well, maybe, I don't know. Maybe she'll recast herself, but I don't know. Maybe she likes seeing herself on film. Who the hell knows? In any case, here she was explaining, you know, the Prince Harry taught her to curtsy. She was just a little down-home girl from, from, from America, and she came in, and she had, to, she had to learn the ways of the royals, but only she was able to identify their deepest secret flaw. Racism. Here we go, with Oprah. Harry and I are in the car, and he says, okay, well, my, my grandmother's there, so you're going to meet her. Said, oh, great. I love grandma. I loved my grandmother. I used to take care of my grandma. This is great. He goes, right, do you know how to curtsy? I said, what? He said, do you know how to curtsy? Now, I thought genuinely that that was what happens outside. Yeah. I thought that was part of the fanfare. Or, uh-huh. I didn't think that's what happens inside. And yeah. I said, but it's your grandmother. He goes, it's the queen. Wow. And that was really the first moment that the penny dropped. Oh, my God. She never realized she was supposed to curtsy before the queen. Um, so that's well, what a difficult. I mean, how difficult must that have been to have to curtsy before the Queen of England? And my God, how humiliating. You know, like every other human who curtsies before the Queen of England or bows before the, the Queen of England. Can't, can't believe it. Just just crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. And that's when the penny dropped and she was about to learn of the predations of the royals. And what, by the way, it's not all on Meghan Markle. Harry's the actual villain of this piece. Okay, Harry grew up with these people, and now he's just dumping all over his entire family. Harry's a bag of garbage. Harry is terrible. <laughs> Harry was Captain, uh, Captain. I'm going to dress up however I want to dress up. I'm going to go to Las Vegas and get naked and smoke pot on the basis of my royal heritage. And then he's like, and you know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to take my entire family. I'm just going to drive up this bus over them, back up the bus over them, because my wife who wants to be a famous actress and wasn't very good in suits. Now she wants it. So I'm going to go right along. The, the real villain here is not even Megan. Right? Megan is whatever Megan is. Harry is the one who's the villain. It's his family, right? So. Whatever I think of Meghan, I think twice as badly of, uh, of Harry. Okay, so then Meghan Markle starts talking about how difficult, uh, she starts talking about how, how racist everyone was. And she relates a conversation in which apparently somebody asked how dark her son's skin would be. Now, this would be an excellent time for Oprah being the interviewer to ask, okay, can you name a name? I mean, that would be, the, if someone says something as overtly racist as how dark is your son's skin going to be? First of all, what kind of stupid, like, I'm just going to say it. I don't believe that happened. I don't think that happened. Honest to God, I don't think it happened. The reason I don't think that happened is because no one says anything like that. That's a ridiculous question. How dark is your son's skin going to be? I mean, like, beyond, like, the racism of it, the actual stupidity, like, the human stupidity of having to ask that question, do you not know what biracial children look like? Like, that's a, what? Because I don't believe this for a second, but here she is saying a thing. I don't believe, plus she's a, Maybe it's true and she's such a bad actress that I can't even tell that it's true. That's possible too. Here is Meghan Markle. In those months when I was pregnant, all around this same time, so we have in tandem the conversation of he won't be given security, he's not going to be given a title, and also concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. What? Cut away to Oprah looking all shocked. Um, yeah. 
Um, mm -hmm. and, and of course, she, she connects the fact that, that Harry, who is like ninth in line for the throne at this point, that, that Harry is not going to get the security and he's not going to get all this stuff. And, and again, they I believe at this point, they'd already decided they wanted to move to America, that that was going to be the basis for, that was going to be the basis. It was all about skin color. Of course, it was all about the racism. Okay, so she continues along these lines. And then she says that she wanted to commit suicide and the royal family would not get her the mental help that she required. Okay, now, again, I don't know the truth or falsehood of any of these statements. I do know that once you claim that you were suicidal, that you had suicidal ideation, then people generally should not question that. So I will assume that this is true. I also will assume that I have no idea what anybody else did around her because I don't think that she's a credible source about anything other than her own feelings. I think most people are credible sources on their own feelings, but people tend not to be credible sources when, they're, when their self-interest is at stake. Here is Meghan Markle then trying to impute to the royal family a lack of care for her suicidal ideation, which is a hell of an accusation to make. Look, I was really ashamed to say it at the time and ashamed to have to admit it to Harry, especially, um, because I know how much loss he suffered. Mm -hmm. But I knew that if I didn't say it, that I would do it. And I, I just didn't, I just didn't want to be alive anymore. Okay, and then what she says is that she went to the institution and they were like, you can't get outside help because if you get outside help, then that is going to become a story in and of itself. Well, okay, first of all, Meghan Markle was a story from like the day that she joined the royal family because she started lecturing everybody inside the palace about race. I mean, she was in the tabloids every single day. So that's number one. Number two, if you think there aren't healthcare workers on staff at the palace, I have doubts. We'll get to more on this in just one second. First, let us talk about a simple truth. A lot is happening at that front door. It's never been more important to see who is there or what is happening. That is why now is the perfect time to upgrade your doorstep with a Ring video doorbell. With Ring, you can see and speak to whomever is at your door from anywhere right on your phone. So you'll never miss a visitor, whether it's your neighbor, your dinner, your groceries, or you can keep those packages and deliveries safe as well. With motion detection, you get notified even if they don't ring the doorbell. If somebody stops by or something is going on, Ring lets you know. This is how I keep an eye on my kids. I have three kids. They're all moving now. The baby is crawling around. This means I cannot keep track of all three of them at the same time. And I only have two eyes and they have to be focused in the same direction. There's no way for me to just be able to focus in several different places at once. No matter your home, Ring has everything you need to protect it. See and speak to whoever is at your door from anywhere with video doorbells. Keep an eye on every corner of your house with easy to install indoor and outdoor cams. Protect your whole home with Ring Alarm, a powerful, affordable whole home security system you can easily install yourself. Right now, get a special offer on the Ring Welcome Kit at ring.com slash Ben Shapiro. It comes with the Ring Video Doorbell 3 and the Chime Pro, the perfect way to upgrade your front door and start your Ring experience. So head on over to ring.com slash Ben Shapiro. That is ring.com slash Ben Shapiro. Okay, so I'm not going to question her suicidal ideation. I am going to question the story because again, no names, no specifics. It is all these broad allegations that are being made. And in fact, post-interview, apparently Harry has now come out. He says, you know who it wasn't? It wasn't Elizabeth and it wasn't, it wasn't Prince Philip. It wasn't any of the people who people actually care about from the royal family. But they won't name names. Okay, so this was pretty fun. At a certain point, Oprah actually asked Megan if she left the royal family to brand build. And Megan is like, no, 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 no. Of course not. Here she was. There are even stories that you knew all along that this was going to happen. You went through the whole process and it was all intentional to build your brand. Can you imagine how little sense that makes? I left my career, my life. <laughs> I left everything because I love him, right? <laughs> and our plan was to do this forever. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> our plan for me, I mean, I wrote... <laughs> letters to his family when I got there saying, I am dedicated to this. I'm here for you. Use me as you'd like. There was no guidance as well, right? Mm -hmm. There were certain things that you couldn't do, but you know, unlike what you see in the movies, there's no class on how to, how to speak, how to cross your legs, how to be royal. There's none of that training. That might exist for other members of the family. That was okay, not something okay, that was offered Okay, 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 okay. The beginning, the beginning part of that. That's hysterically funny. I'm sorry. That's just from any angle. That is super funny. So Oprah's like, so did you like join the royal family? And then you knew that you were going to build your career that way. And she's like, can you imagine? Can I left my career as a second rate actress in a third tier part on suits to be a princess. And somebody would suggest that I did that for career purposes. 
No, I did it because I love this dumbass over here. It's because I love the guy sitting next to me. This guy right here. Prince Harry, Captain Lovable. Love that guy. I mean, I left a job on suits. On suits. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure it was all pure love. Listen, maybe they love each other. That's fine. Uh, sure. All right. Sure. I'm, I'm sure career had nothing to do with it. Uh, like, I'm sorry. That's, I left my job on suits, and you're suggesting that maybe becoming a princess was a career move? A little. A little I'm suggesting. Because <laughs> um, that is not a horizontal move right there. I'm sorry. When you think of like horizontal versus vertical career moves, actress on suits to princess. Is that a horizontal move? I'm going to go no on that one. No. Okay, but again, Markle is not the actual villain of this piece. Meghan Markle is whatever Meghan Markle is. Okay, Prince Harry is the villain of the piece. He knows all the members of his family. He's the one who has decided that he is going to go along with whatever his wife wants to do here. And he's going to say terrible, terrible things about his family. And he's going to prove that he is morally superior to his family. So, for example, Prince Harry, he says that he is free. His brother and his father, they are trapped. But he, he is so free now. He's free like a bird. And he is free to speak about the evils of his own family. First of all, people who dump on their own families typically ask jackasses, like not good people. Here, here's Prince Harry. You know, but I'm, I'm free. They're trapped. I'm, I'm here with you, Oprah, with you. Here's Prince Harry, who, again, worse than Meghan Markle. The Please race. explain how you, Prince Harry, raised in a palace in a life of privilege, literally a prince, how you were trapped. Trapped within the system, like the rest of my family are. My father and my brother, they are trapped. They don't get to leave. And I have huge compassion for that. Wow. I mean, they don't get to leave. They're trapped. But I, I am free here with you, Oprah. And, I'll, and you know, I got cut off from the royal fortune. I, only ha I could only live on my mother's $25 million endowment. That's really what they said. $25 million. Okay, so there's an actual deeper underlying thing that's going on here, and that has to do with racism and colonialism. There's been this move in Britain to do sort of what you've seen in the United States, which is the entire history of Britain is about colonialism and racism and brutality in the same way that the entire history of America is about racism and colonialism and brutality, right? This is all tied in. And Prince Harry backs that to the hilt. So he starts talking about how he's done the work, right? Other members of the royal family, they didn't do the work. He says racism drove him out of Britain. It was the tabloids and their racism that drove him out of Britain. And then he says, quote, I've spent many years doing the work and doing my own learning, but then my upbringing and the system in which I was brought up and in which I've been exposed to, I wasn't aware of it to start with, but by God, it doesn't take very long to suddenly become aware of it. It takes living in her shoes for a day or those first eight days to see where it was going to go and how far they were going to take it and get away with it. Yes, yes. Now he he's going to lecture the royal family on their race. Again, the only reason he's a relevant figure is because this is a relevant institution, but this is an attempt to tear down the institution. So let's be clear about what this is. Okay, at least by Prince Harry. And, you know, I, I think that Markle is just bringing American brand racial politics to Britain. And it's kind of it's kind of an ugly sight. It is kind of especially if you're not willing to name names, because let's be real about this. If somebody said that as an employee of the royal family and they, she named the name, they'd be fired. Right now, there's an investigation going on into Meghan Markle, right? Not into the royal family. It's going on into Meghan Markle and how she treated the employees and the staff over there. The reason this has some deeper significance, though, truly, is because what everybody recognizes is that the British monarchy being essentially just a facade at this point, that it really doesn't have any institutional power. All it is, is just a face for the history of Britain. And when Harry and Meghan make the case that the British monarchy is rife with colonialism and racism, that they have not moved beyond any of that, that there is still this deep systemic racism that is inherent in the most beloved part of the British government, namely the figurehead. What they're really saying is that all of British history and really British society is infused with the same sort of systemic racism they accuse America of, of having as well. That's what this is all about. I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Ben Shapiro Show. If you did, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you stay up to date on all of our future content.